Okay, so next part of modifying our i30N is going to be upgrading the standard intercooler. What we'll be fitting is the new Forge Motorsport intercooler. It's obviously a lot bigger in size itself, surface area. It's got a much larger core. Also includes a larger diameter hot pipe. We'll be replacing that. Before we, uh, we fit it, I'll be porting both the sides of it so that we can measure any pressure differential drop for our own data and yours. And uh, also monitoring the air temp once it's back on the dyno to see what improvements it gives us. Okay, so standard intercooler is off. That's the one on the front here. The Forge Motorsport is this one here. As you can tell visually, it's uh, a much larger size, deeper core, taller core as well. Aside from that, it also has a upgraded inlet and outlet hot or cold side pipe work from two inch to two and a half inch. inch. The whole kit comes with all the pipe work, the silicon, the joiners and the, uh, and the hose clamps you need. Very straightforward to fit, very comprehensive kit. So hoping to see some good results. So, like I was saying when it was on the table, this Forge Motorsport kit comes with all new silicon adapters for the larger, this is the cold side. So, it's gonna go on the inner cooler, pick up the existing cold side pipe up to the throttle body. All right, so inner cooler's on, cold side's done. This is the new hot side pipe. Basically picks up the existing hot pipe from the turbo, comes along the inside of the chassis here, and we'll pick up the uh, hot side of the inner cooler. So, we'll fit that up now and see how it looks. All right, so fitted up the hot pipe, just banging the hose clamps on. I know that uh, some people tend to put the hose clamps on and then slide the pipes over. I prefer to open up the hose clamps and slip them on afterwards. It just gives me a chance to line up the silicon and everything a little bit nicer. So getting there. All right, one of the other upgrades or uh, bolt-ons we're gonna fit while the front bar off is the Velocitec intake. It goes behind the grill. Uh, there is a little bit of a modification around the air dam to make it fit, but it'll, uh, it'll also be very good to see how it increases uh, airflow. So we'll check that out on the dyno as well. We've got the standard intercooler on the vehicle at the moment. Basically what we're gonna do is put it on the dyno. We're gonna fit some barbs to each of the end tanks so we can measure the pressure differential drop across the intercooler. We're also going to be monitoring the intake air temperature and the end tank temperatures using a thermal heat gun. So some data we got from the standard intercooler as far as the temperature goes. The external end tanks measured 53 degrees on the hot side, 31 degrees on the cold side, meaning that was a 22 degree difference across it with the scan gauge reading 54 degrees intake temperature measured off the factory intake temperature sensor. Boost efficiency for the standard intercooler was measured at 2,500 RPM, which is where we found it had its peak level of boost in comparison to the aftermarket intercooler. On the hot side, it measured 22.9 PSI. On the cold side, 21.9 PSI, meaning there was a pressure drop of one PSI across the factory intercooler. So we've come off the dyno, fitted our Forge Motorsport intercooler to it after doing all the data running on the standard intercooler. Uh, exactly the same setup, we've probed both sides of the intercooler to get a pressure difference between the two sides. We'll monitor that as well as the intake temperatures, so it'll be interesting to see the differences. Started off with the temperature side of things again, got some good data. The hot side externally saw 64 degrees, but the cold side seeing a 27 degrees. 
Now that's a big difference of 37 degrees. Keep in mind these are an aluminium end tank and that's a really great result. Yep. As far as the boost efficiency goes, again at 2,500 RPM. The hot side was 23.4 PSI with the cold side being 22.7 PSI with an, another incredible result of only 0.7 PSI pressure drop. So definitely the Forge Motorsport uh, in a cooler had some great results. So looking at this side by side comparison using our thermal gun between the standard intercooler and the Forge Motorsport intercooler on the hots and tanks. You can basically see that even though the standard intercooler being plastic looks cooler, obviously the aluminium end tank on the Forge Motorsport looks hotter. The outlet temperatures are a lot cooler on the Forge Motorsport, just showing how much more efficient it is than the standard intercooler. That's good.